your organization runs training courses for your staff and customers. Only problem is, it's time-consuming, inconvenient, and costly. Take a leaf out of our book. The School of Hard Knock Knocks uses the online training platform by YZ, and our team and customers love it. It's simple to use, supports every media format, audio, video, text, and looks great on desktops, tablets, and mobiles. And for a limited time, quote SHKK when you arrange a demo and get 10% off your first year's plan. YZ helps us deliver comedy courses around the world. Imagine what it could do for your organization. YZ, that's WYZED.com. YZ, online learning made simple. You're listening to the School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast with me, Steve Davis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian. <laughs> Shouldn't drink on an empty head, you know that, don't you? Everyone in this room is now dumb for having no. listened to it. That's a bucket list. <laughs> you have dangerously underprepared yourself for the shit that is about to get real. Comedy writer and performer Stephen Oliver is best known for his characters on ABC's Black Comedy, particularly his catchphrase, Hello, sluts. In this School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast, host Steve Davis talks to Stephen Oliver about how he got his start in performance, writing poems, songs, scripts and monologues, as well as how he creates authentic sketch comedy and cabaret, all the while making his audience think. I'm sure you'll enjoy this interview with Stephen Oliver. Dear slut. What slut? I'm ringing to apologise. Oh, who's this? Oh, you know who this is. Ah, big booty Troy. Nothing even happened. Oh, what was that? I can't hear you over all the sloppy noises your hall is making. Nothing even happened. Oh, what is it you want anyway? I'm trying to work. I have a, a surprise for you. Oh, what surprise? That better not be at the door. I hate sluts coming to my house. Where's Big Buddy Troy? Oh, well, probably playing with his Big Buddha. Ah, oh, so you didn't poke then? That's what I was trying to tell you. Well, you want to try harder? You wouldn't let me. Oh, I'm letting you? Well, let me take you out then. Oh, take me where? Where do you want to go? Somewhere that costs a lot of money. How much money? Biggest mob money. Can you afford me? What's this then, slut? <gasps> What's this then, slut? I thought I was paying for it, slut. I know, slut. Well, let's just go to slut. Okay, slut. Move, slut. My man taking me out. Stephen Oliver, welcome to the School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast. Uh, thank you for having me. You uh, grew up around the Townsville area and then spent many formative years in Perth. What led you yes. to go to the farthest side of the country possible for that part of your life? Uh, it was actually a uh, course that I just started. Um, it was called the Aboriginal Music Theatre Training Program and it was in conjunction with the Black Swan Theatre Company. Um, who the previous year had done Brand New Day. Oh, um, yes. So they started up this, um, yeah, well, when they got the script for Brand New Day, they didn't have enough um, chorus, I believe. So they had to start up a three-month course to train people up, ready to take it on the road, and then the next year they had a six-month one, and that was the one I was part of. And what do you remember most from that part of your career, of you know, learning the ropes there. I remember loving it. I remember being very homesick uh, for about two months. I really missed home, but I thought, um, no, just get through that and you'll be fine. And uh, thankfully I did. Um, and yeah, it was just, just an exciting time. I was 19 years old, bloody hell. Mm. And I had a head full of hair <laughs> <laughs> and I hadn't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yeah, Perth is where I blossomed. <laughs> well, and uh, is there something from that early experience of being so far away from family that um, I guess prepared you for the life of the travelling performer? Well, I love travelling. I mean, I always have. I mean, it's gotten it's gotten a bit crazy over the last few years. Like, there was one part where I was at like an airport like 26 times in three months. Um, and then when I want to go on holiday, 
I don't want to go anywhere because I don't want to hop on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just one thing. We did talk about your place briefly before we started. You're, you're um, near a, a major road, and as a writer, you've got to try and work. And as I said this next comment, I thought, oh, my God, Steve. I said, oh, isn't the traffic just white noise? And uh, here I am talking to a great black comedian. <laughs> well, I hear white noise all the time, I guess. <laughs> Our culture's full of it. And, and a, gonna... <laughs> a black comedian, more like a slack comedian, I'd say. You know, it's, it's funny when I went to the Logies, um, you know, I'm walking on the red carpet and I'm looking around, you know, there's all the paparazzi and, and the fans and Dr. Goodwin's being interviewed by Richard Wilkins. And I, I look up at the um, Crown Casino mm. and I had this moment where I just think to myself, I'm basically here because I'm a dickhead to make fun. <laughs> But, that, that's that's my what do you call it? I, I have a problem with being called comical genius. I don't think I'm just like no, I'm just an idiot. I'm just a simpleton. <laughs> it, look, it's interesting. I think you've touched on a really important kernel. I, I, I actually, uh, I'm at the bottom end of the skyscraper of comedians to you, but uh, I did some work this week. And as you go on stage with something new, there's you have to have this sense of throwing caution to the wind and thinking, will someone, will anyone find this interesting or compelling? This is just something that's come out of my head. It feels like uh, a a charlatan walking on stage and uh, tricking people into thinking something's of substance. And there you are with that voice going, this is why I'm here. And, And I don't know, is that something that does tickle into your conscious from time to time or is it a thing that you'll you live with all the time no i think i think the trick is well i didn't I shouldn't say trick actually but one of the things that have helped me in my life is that i'm a i'm a really big people person um i just love meeting people and talking to all kinds of people and people from all sort of all cultures mm-hmm. um and getting to know people and i think mm. i don't yeah i don't i don't quite throw caution to the wind when i'm on stage and and stuff like that because I think I've kind of learned a lot from people over the years. Mm. And, and so from all the people, you know, I've kind of met and talked to and like, um, I think one of the greatest gifts some, you know, a young person can give themselves is to travel the world and experience all the different people and the different cultures and, and you know, get out of your own little box. Um, you know, you say in this one box, it's kind of very limiting and, you know, so get out and experience the world and, you know, the more the experience, the more experience you have, the more experienced you are. And um, yeah. you know, I, I don't think I always get it right. You know, it's trial and error and stuff like that. And you know, sometimes people will get offended for a very valid reason. Sometimes people might get offended for a very silly reason. And it's you know, it's kind of being smart enough and educated enough to know the difference. You know, whether you you did say something wrong or, or whether you need to defend what you. Said. Yeah, and I think that just comes from like meeting people and talking to people and. So there's a generosity and an authenticity in wanting to go out there and commune with people rather than try and trick them. So, well, yeah, it's, 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 no, it's, I mean, Aboriginal people, you know, every, everything is about connectedness and, you know, it's understanding, you know, our belonging and all things and our belonging to each other, I guess. So, you know, the, the more you experience that, the more the better you become it. And it's not about trying to be something but we'll say being all you are i guess now Stephen, many people listening to this will know you from black comedy mm-hmm. and uh, i actually wanted to open our interview by saying hello slut <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, <laughs> because of the titters character that you have in that show um however i was reminded before i actually did that ricky gervais in the series uh, called extras series two he makes He gets famous for a sitcom and gets known for a catchphrase, which is, are you having a laugh? And his character is tormented by that. How are you sitting with that S word in your life um, these days? Because you are well known by many people for that outlandish character and slut being used nonstop in some of those skits. Oh, yeah, I love it. I mean, you know, unless people are really kind of very demanding, um, you know, but it's not the word slap that I'm annoyed with. It's all people who are just kind of demanding and rude. But um, no, like, it, 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 there's been so much joy generated out of that. Like, I was I was at a thing with, um, like, a, uh, a home care thing with these elders and stuff. And 
you know, I had I had old aunties coming up asking me to make videos and calling their nieces and nephews sluts. <laughs> <laughs> I had a woman in, you know, um, uh, what's the space there next to the um, Spiegel tent? Is it extension centre? Oh, yes. Center? Yes, yes. Yes, I had a woman who I'd never met before in my life just come up and call me a slut. And the people she was with, they didn't know me, and they were mortified. You know, like, oh, my God, does she know this guy? And I called her a slut back. And went, oh, you do know each other. And he went, actually, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I love the story in Armadale. I had this really timid um, white lady come up to me, and she was so sweet and just really, you know, like, um, oh, oh, excuse me, um, oh, do, you, do you mind if I say something to you? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's just, um, slut. <laughs> And I was like, shut up. That was the last thing I was expecting out of your mouth. <laughs> so now it's, um, you know, and even before, you know, before black comedy, that word kind of, you know, brought me a lot of um, joy because me and my friends, you know, it was a term of endearment. Like, oh, he's so slut. I'm going to take this slut. Or, you know what I mean? So, and I think that's why I like to be called things like that rather than comical genius. I think, and I think applying that word to me changes the comedy that I do and, it sounds so serious. So I'd rather just be a silly slut than a comical genius. After Black Comedy, I kind of realised, because I was becoming this idea to people because I saw that the way they were just making me this titty character and that's all they wanted me to be. And, and you know, I found that I found that very, um, felt very claustrophobic. Like, yeah, I was just confined to this one thing and I was just meant to be this one thing all the time and just to do this. And um, that's why I started pushing my poetry out. Because I wanted to show people that, well, yes, I am an idiot and I have these really stupid, outlandish thoughts. But at the same time, I I sit around and I think deeply about things. And, and you know, that's the dichotomy of being human. You know, we're complex like that. And um, I think we limit ourselves if we try to be this kind of one brand. Like people talk about, you know, have a brand and and that. And I think, no, it's nice to surprise people. Sketch comedy, writing sketch comedy... What was that like in that process? Uh, because many people listening to this are, are budding comedians, stand-up people, uh, and they'll be banging out you know three-minute sets, five-minute sets. But the demand of coming up with sketch comedy, uh, where it's filmed, you've got characters. Um, can you just give us a glimpse of what that process is like as a writer and performer? I loved it. Um, it was finally a chance. Like I said, I'd never actually written sketch comedy before. Um, that's not to say I didn't have like, you know, 10 million ideas in my head. I just never actually got them out. Um, so for me, it was the experience of finally just having these ideas and being able to go, oh, can I do something with that? And, you know, and just getting it out because it's, it's amazing how we can have an idea in our head. Um, but then when you speak it, you know, that changes it, that idea once you actually hear what you were thinking. What gets and are they fully formed written scripts for a sketch, or is there a, a, enough room left for improvisation during the shooting? There's always room for um for that if we had time. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes we'd, we'd kind of we'd get them and go, "Oh, that kind of doesn't feel right. Maybe try this, or let's do this, or you know, or that's drawing focus." So. Let's bring it back to the, you know, what the joke is. And did you notice any comedy ideas um, flourish or actually diminish as you had to share them with others? Because I imagine it's a group process. Well, the way we did it, uh, we we'd spent time together in a room. We talked to our ideas. And we go, yeah, well, that sounds funny. Um, yeah, that sounds okay. And then we would just go away by ourselves and, and write these ideas out. And then I'll just hand them in at the end of the day. And did you have to come up with ideas when you had nothing in the tank? Yeah, no, well, um, was I was kind of like, okay, where haven't we seen Aboriginal people before? So that's why I did, like, Star Blacks, because I love Star Trek. And, you know, there's never anything been done with Aboriginal people in space. So, um, you know, I wanted to do that. Um, but I got robbed of Captain Kirk down on... Uh, <laughs> Captain Rogers, I think I named him. <laughs> but, um... Because you don't want to go over the kind of, you know, same jokes that have been done before. And, um, yeah. And and it, yeah. it also was that thing of, like, you know, people trying to be safe all the time. It's like, well, if this hasn't kind of been done before, like, you know, you can really test it out. <laughs> <laughs> now, on a shift gears, because I just saw you perform at the Adelaide Cabaret Festival in your show Bigger and Blacker, mm-hmm. you open up with some of the most 
delightfully smutty um, <laughs> um, banter and cabaret style song, all about sex and plenty of innuendo. And then, of course, as you work through the show, you bring in depth and making us think about real things. Is there a formula that you've used to get the balance right? I think the main thing for me is that that's, that's not something I, th- I think about. I just know I want to make people laugh, but I just want to make them think. I think rather than think about it, you feel your way through it. And, you know, you can feel if something is, is too heavy or if it's, yeah, if it's missing something. So I don't, oh, yeah, I like I don't go into stuff like kind of thinking about it. If I just write something and a funny line comes to me, I'll, I'll chuck it in, you know. But then I'll go back, like I'll look at it maybe later and go, oh yeah, no, it kind of ruins that moment there. So I want the moment, so I'll lose the joke, or you know, or really need the joke there because it's been too, you know. But um, yeah, I don't think of the balance at you know at first um until you don't even really think about it after. I just kind of think I want to tell a a story that's meaningful, um, but it's also joyful. <laughs> wow. See what I mean? You don't want to get inside this head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I, I think it would be invaluable to be inside that head. Um, last, last quick question. It's probably not quick, but you are you you are a writer, and you spend a lot of time writing. Are you the sort of writer who just writes? to keep the volume of writing up and then you go back and you sift out the gems or do you pause and only write when there's a formed idea at work? Yeah, it's interesting because I've been thinking about this a lot lately and um, how writing has even changed for me in the sense that before uh, writing was merely just, you know, if I had a thought about something or if I was feeling strongly about something, um, writing was always a way for me to find a resolution. So I would kind of just start writing out my, you know, the thought that was in my head and then kind of just, see, you know, see what took me and then have a conversation with myself while I'm writing it and, and you know, see the, see the pros and cons of what I was going through and, and then, you yeah, know, working it out by the end. And I always knew within that first line whether it would be a, a poem, a song, a script or a monologue. Like there's a rhythm, I, I think, to... Um, all those things because again I think that's is you know with one big rhythm and um mm-hmm. yeah when when you kind of find that rhythm or something um go with it <laughs> and and don't try to make it you know something it's not a because you want it to be something else you know let the follow the beat that sounds so wishy washy but <laughs> yeah kind of trust it like. It's just nicer when you have a thing that you feel is more authentic and and from the very depths of your being and not something you just reached inside and grabbed as quickly as you could. When do we get to see you next, Stephen? What, what's what's up? In, are there live gigs? Are there more um, theatre and TV shows coming up? Anything you could draw our attention to now if we haven't got enough Stephen Oliver fix from this chat? <laughs> Um, oh, there's a few things. So, I'm doing a game show that's going to be on NITV. A game show? A game show. I'm going to be a game show host. Yeah. Oh, um, awesome. So, that'll be fun. Um, I'm also writing a play uh, for the Brisbane Festival that's happening in September. And that's one that's very philosophical and got me thinking all crazy things at like 2, 3 in the morning. Oh, and what I'm actually doing bigger and blacker up in Townsville as well. Well, I heartily recommend seeing that if, if someone hasn't seen it. It was a great show. Thank you, Stephen Oliver. Uh, thank you, Steve. You have a good day, Manny.